all right everybody i'm back with another video and i want to talk about in this video what should be done and not done in the church and when i say the church i'm talking about in the building in the gathering of the congregation of believers so what should be done what should not be done let's start this teaching here off in the book of matthew chapter 21 and i want to start reading at verse 12 and it says this and jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves now let's analyze this Jesus going to the temple of God where God should be worshipped at he saw people in there selling selling doves and all type of stuff right so Jesus in the righteous anger that he have a right to use he went in there and started casting out people another scripture tells you that he took a whip of cords and he drove them out so he drove out all them people that was in the temple selling in there, using it as a marketplace, like a store. And see, because, and it's a purpose for that. Was Jesus wrong? No, he is righteous in that. Why? Because he was defending his father's house. And notice how Jesus gave scripture. He says, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of of thieves uh, uh yeah a den of thieves so now it's a den of thieves because you what you're doing is you stealing hallelujah to god you are stealing what's supposed to be dedicated to god you stealing that um to um to give it to your own benefit your own profit so you stealing from god like god is being robbed God is being robbed of the worship that only he should be getting there. It shouldn't be nothing else taking place in that house. Now, let's go into a few things that should be done in the house of God. Or in the church, or in the temple, or in the synagogue, whatever you want to call it. Either way, it's the house of God. So let's talk about what should be done. Now, let's go into what Jesus said about my house shall be called a house of prayer. Let's look at the book of Luke chapter 18. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Luke chapter 18, let's look at verse number 10. Now, let's start at nine. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Now, verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. So now we can see in this scripture that we got two men going up into the temple to pray. So I'm saying that because I want you to see that Jesus said that it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And you got two people here in the book of Luke chapter 18, a publican and a Pharisee who goes up the temple to pray. So in the house of God, one thing that should be done is prayer. Prayer is what you offer to God. You, you seeking God, you calling out to God in the house of in the house of God. So that's one thing is prayer. Let's go to another thing. I want to go to what else should be done in the house of God. Let's go over to the book of Psalms. And I want to go to uh chapter 5. So Psalms chapter 5. Uh -oh. And I want to go over to verse number 7. All right, Psalms 5 verse 7 says this. It says, but as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. So we got David, the Psalm of David. He's talking about going into uh, God's holy, holy temple 
and worship him. So we got worship. Let's look at Psalms chapter 150. Psalms chapter 150, and I want to read uh, verse 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. So, we see that in this temple, in this house of God, it should be offered praise unto God. So, praise God in his sanctuary. Okay, the writer says. Praise him in his sanctuary. So, when we go into the sanctuary of God, we should be praising him. And, and, and as you continue to read um, through 150, when you go into verse 3, you can use instruments. You can use trumpets and, and timbrels and, and dancing. So, in this temple, you are given um, praise and worship to God in many different forms, okay? Um, and everything in there gives God praise, all right? So, we got worship and we got praise that should be also be um, going along. We got prayer, worship, and praise, okay? Now, let's go what else should be done in the temple. Let's look at the book of Luke. Let's look at chapter 4. Let me show you what else should be done in the house of God. So Luke chapter 4, let's look at verses uh, 14 through 17. And it says this, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. This is after he come out of um, temptation from the devil. He says, And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Okay? Um, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, which is Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. Then the scripture goes on to tell you how he read from the book. So something else that should be done in the house of God is teaching, opening up the Bible. That should be done as Jesus did and provided a perfect example. As his custom was, he taught in the synagogues. So when you go to the house of God, it should be also for the purpose of teaching and being taught. So you should have a minister there that's going to teach you the word of God. And you should be there for the purpose of being taught the word of God. Jesus went to the um, the book was open to him in um, Isaiah. And he began to read from the book. Okay. So you should be taught in the house of God. Let's look at um, Nehemiah real quick. The book. All right. So Nehemiah chapter 8. Let's look at... Uh, let me try to go through this real quick. Verses 1 through 6. It says, Nehemiah 8, 1 through 6. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man in the street that was before the water gate. Now, you got people gathering together, okay? And it says, And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses. So we got the gathering of people and they are speaking to Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. All right. And Israel and Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. So he read from morning to midday the law of God. And it says, before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Remember I said you should be going there for the purpose of being taught. So now you got the people here that's in the street that's gathered together to hear the law of God. They were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a poor pit of wood which they had made for the purpose for the purpose and beside him stood um i want to say matathiah i may be saying that wrong but matathiah and shema and 
Anaya and Uriah or Uriah and Hilkiah and Messiah. Messiah, forgive me for pronouncing these names wrong. It says on his right hand and on his left hand, Padiah and Mishiah. But anyways, you got the list of people. And let's go to verse five. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. All right, for he was above all the people. And when he had opened it, all the people stood up. All right. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. So you got a gathering of people and they standing up before Ezra, um, the priest, and he's reading the law of God before the people. And they stood and they paid attention to what he was saying. Because why? Because they was there for the purpose of being taught. So that's another thing you have that should be done in the house of God. That is teaching. You know, you should be taught the word of God. The word of God need to be opened. If a preacher just preaching to you his mouth and not opening up the word of God and teaching from that, I see a problem. Now let's go to um, Matthew chapter 21. Let's look at verse 14. Let me show you what else should be done in the house of God. Now this is Jesus. All right. After he had already um, cast out those that, you know, were selling um, in the temple. All right. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Just right. That's all I want to point out. In the temple, Jesus healed the blind and the lame that came in the temple. All right. So you got healing being done. So if anyone have the gift of healing, healing should be taking place in the temple of God. Let, let me show you what else should be done in the temple of God. Let's look at the book of Mark, chapter 1. The book of Mark, chapter 1, I want to start reading at verse 21. All right? Let's look at it. It says, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. All right, so we got Jesus entering into the synagogue and taught, and there were astonished, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribe. So there's more teaching in the synagogue, okay? And uh, and there was in their synagogue, so in the synagogue, it said there was a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth, or thou come to destroy us? I know thee, um, who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now we got a, we got a devil. We got an unclean spirit speaking through this man. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. So we can see also what's being done in the synagogue or in the house of God or in the temple. We have uh, what people will call an exorcism or the casting out of a devil, casting out unclean spirits. This is something that should be done in the house of God. So now notice the thing that is being done in the house of God, okay? You got, um, and, and, and I'm going to go back over a quick list in the end. So let's go to something else. Let's go to the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's look at verse 25. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. All right. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching so we can see that we must have a, a symbol of the believers so a believers should be assembled together so that's something that's that's the church right there that's the congregation the congregation is the assembling of believers okay let's look at the book of acts chapter 2 to go with this I want to go to Acts chapter 2 and I want to go to verse 44. It says, uh, And all that believed were together and had all things coming. So we see more that the believers are assembled together. 
So that's not something else that's taking place in the house of God. It is an assemble of believers. Okay, they're not forsaking assembling themselves, like Paul, like the writer in Hebrew says, as the manner of some is. But no, you assemble together in the house of God. Now, it's something else I want to go to real quick, and uh, that should be done, and that's in the book of Second Chronicles. Now, understand this, that this is something that was done in the Old Testament, a little different than the way we do it today. But I want you to see what's something else that's, um, that should be done in the house of God. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 3. Let's start reading at verse number uh, 3. 2 Second Chronicles chapter 2, starting at verse 3. It says, And Solomon went to Huram, the king of Tyre, saying, as thou didst de um, deal with David my father, and didst send him cedars to build him a house to dwell therein, even so deal with me. Behold, I build in house to the name of the Lord my God. So understand, we are talking about the house of God that um, that Solomon is determined to build for the name of God. Okay, so he says, Behold, I build in house to the name of the Lord my God to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continual showbread and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbath and on the new moons and on the solemn feast of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel and the house which I build is great for great is our God above our God above all gods who is able who is able he say but who is able to build him in house seeing the heaven and um the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him for who am i then that i should build him a house save or accept only to burn sacrifice before him so solomon is saying hey i'm i'm gonna build i want to build a house of the name of my god for the purpose of sacrifice to him yeah god cannot be contained in a house made with hands because heaven is his throne but yet solomon says i'm gonna build a house for god except only to burn sacrifice before him so it's the, for the purpose of offering sacrifices so we don't offer sacrifices in this day they did in solomon's day under the law of moses but in this day the sacrifice is us now let's look at romans 12 let's look at romans chapter 12 let's look at uh verse 1 I beseech you, mean I urge you, I encourage you, brethren, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, uh, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So now the reasonable service that we offer in this day as a sacrifice to God is our bodies, is our living bodies. We have to um, make ourselves holy and acceptable to God. And that is something else that is done in the house of God. We are in God offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. All right. So let's look at um, first Peter. I mean, first Timothy, first Timothy, now. first Timothy, chapter three. Let's look at verse 15, and I'm about to dump this video. 1 Timothy chapter 3, let's look at verse 15. And the scripture says, but if I tarry long, this is Paul talking to Timothy, he says, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay, so Paul saying that, hey, I'm teaching you how to behave yourself in the house of God. Now, why is Paul saying it to, t to Timothy? Why? Because you got to know how to behave yourself in the house of God. So in other words, what I'm saying is that there is order in the house of God. Okay? Women should not just be out on um, this getting up speaking and yelling out stuff and, and going on a rant. Okay? People shouldn't just be going on rants. Man, it's deep. Okay? Because in the book of first Corinthians chapter 11 it talks about how when 
when you are get when you are um receiving um uh communion okay when you're communion when you're remembering the lost death and burial and resurrection um by taking communion um people shouldn't just be going in the house of god for the purpose of just eating you shouldn't be going in there for, for eating and drinking no why because you are going in the house of god when you take communion for the purpose of remembering what he did and that's his death and his resurrection until he come that's what you should be doing in the house of god is when you take communion okay all right now let's look at something else that should not be done in the house of god Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's read, uh, let's start at here at uh, verse 23. Paul says to the Corinthian church, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place, okay? So we got the gathering of other believers into one place. Paul says, and all speak with tongues. So if everybody come together and all speaking with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? Okay, so when he said mad, he meaning like, like y'all crazy up in here. Why? Because everybody's speaking with tongues. Okay, but he says, but if all, because tongues is a language people don't understand, or it's other languages, okay? Or it's a language between you and God that only you and God understand. So, I mean, what only God understands. So if, if some unbelievers or unlearned people come into the congregation of believers gathered together and everybody is speaking with a tongue, people are going to think y'all crazy. That's what the word mad means. He says uh, in this context, but he says, but if all prophesy and there come in one that believe it not and one unlearned, guess what? He is convinced of all. Why? Because he's speaking in a manner people can understand. He prophesying. He's speaking in the same language, but he prophesying. And he says, um, but if all prophesy and there come in one that believe not or unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of all. Okay, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. What's in the heart is going to be made known. Why? Because they can understand him. And he says, and so uh, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. So he can even testify, man, that, hey, God is in you. He understand what you're saying because you prophesying in the same language he's speaking, not in with other tongues. Okay, he says, how is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you had a song, had a doctrine, had a tongue, had a revelation, had an interpretation. He says, let all things be done unto edifying. See, it's not edifying when everybody got a doctrine, everybody got a song, everybody got a revelation or interpretation. No, he said, let all things be done unto edifying. He says, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, if you're speaking in an unknown tongue, he says, let it be by two or at the most by three. And that by course, they mean taking turns. Everybody shouldn't be speaking together in the tongue. Why? Because he says, you know, that it should be done by course, by taking turns and let one interpret. One should be interpreting. But he says, but there, but if there be no interpreter, he says, let him keep silence in the church. You can't go into church speaking in a tongue and nobody is there to interpret it. And if if you if you got a tongue and nobody is there to interpret, he says, keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. So in other words, speak to yourself, speak low, speak to God. Don't speak it out loud. Okay, because there's no interpreter there to interpret. Why? Because you're going to find out why. Verse 29, let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Everybody shouldn't be prophesying together. It should be done in course. Okay, taking turns. And somebody should be uh, interpreting the tongues. Okay, he says, if any, or let me read that again. He says, let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Okay. If any man be revealed, if anything be revealed to one another that sit it by, let the first hold his peace. See, you got to be quiet if you speak in some. Let the first hold your peace, okay? He says, for ye may all prophesy how one by one that all may learn. You can't learn if you got two, three people speaking at once. But he says, do it 
all prophesied one by one. Take turns. Okay? Why? That all may learn and all may be comforted. And he says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject unto the prophets. So you ain't going to be able to speak unless, you know, um, basically your spirit is subject to you. Okay, so you got self-control. You can control yourself. Everybody don't have to speak at one time. Why? Because your spirit is subject to you. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Okay, and he says, and this is the reason why all this must be done. For Look at verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. So we got order that has to be kept in the church okay so i hope you understand what should be done what should not be done in the church and and, and i'm gonna reiterate everything i said what should be done in the church you shouldn't be selling nothing in a church that includes food donuts chicken no matter what i don't care if you're raising money for the church it should not be done in the church what else should not be done in the church you shouldn't be selling cds and dvds even of the service that should not be done because god's house is not going to be the den of thieves. You are robbing God of what should be dedicated to him. You are robbing God of the worship that should only be given to him. You should not be in church selling nothing. But what you should be doing in the church. Spirit telling me to say it again. You should not be selling nothing in the house of God. But what you should be doing in the church. You should have prayer, okay? Worship and praise. You should be there to receive and be taught the word of God. You should see healing to the ill being done in the church. You should see casting out in devil, casting out of devils that can be done in the church. And you should have an assemble of believers. Or a symbol of people being done in the church. Man shouldn't be there by itself. You should have believers together. And you should have offerings being done in the church. It's okay to have a monetary offering for the church to build the church for the sake of the church may do things to help out the people, to help out the poor. So you can give a monetary offering in church, but your body should be offered as a living sacrifice in that church. And last of all, um, well, the, the, the church assembly should be dedicated only solely to God. And it should be order in the house of God. All right. So I hope you learned something what should be done and what should not be done in the church. OK, so if you see anything done contrary to what was being preached, they out of order and that church needed to get it together, need to get it together.